My name is Sergei Bogodin, and this is my oral presentation for the European Polymer Forum held in Granada, Spain in June 2011. I'm doing my doctorate study in Universitat Rovira Virgilio, situated in the city called Tarragona, at east of Spain, just 85 kilometers away from Barcelona. The primary research interest of me and my supervisor, Dr. Vladimir Baulin, is a theoretical study of interaction between nanoparticles and cell membranes. The question we'd like to address is, what happens when a nanoparticle meets a cell membrane? Will it be able to break through it, or will it stuck inside, or even won't be able to penetrate into it? And what is more important, will it damage the membrane causing the cell death, or not? There is a lot of experimental work going on in this direction nowadays. People can produce nanoparticles of different shapes and size, even create a patterns on their surface, but when they add them to a biological system, resolution of experimental methods is usually not high enough to see in all details how individual nanoparticles interact with the cells. And we believe that theoretical and especially computer simulation studies can help here a lot to understand what exactly going on in these experiments. Of course, computer simulation of the real cell membrane is a very challenging task, because the real cell membrane is a very complex structure consisting of phospholipid bilayer like a basement and a lot of different proteins inserted into it. So what a lot of people do, and we do it as well, we are considering just a poor phospholipid bilayer like a first approximation for the real cell membrane. And then most of people apply molecular dynamic and Monte Carlo simulation techniques to study this phospholipid bilayer, but we choose another way. We are trying to develop so-called single chain mean field method, which presumably can be faster for investigation of behavior of this phospholipid bilayer. In our model, we represent phospholipid molecule as a set of spherical bits. We can do it with different amount of details, but in most of cases, just three bit model is enough. In this case, we present for a gyrophilic head of the phospholipid with a bead attracted to solvent, and two gyrophobic tails of the phospholipid we present with two beads attracted to similar beads of other molecules. This molecule can bend around the central bead, and all interaction and geometrical parameters we fit in that way that output of the simulation reproduce the properties of real phospholipid membranes, such as thickness, density, and stretching modulus. To perform simulation, we put phospholipid molecules into simulation box, and we avoid that they will form part of the phospholipid membrane. Of course, it's taken into account in our model that this membrane actually go beyond the dimension of the box. Also, we assume that the free space in the box is occupied by solvent, which is implicit in our model. And here we come to the key point of our method, the so-called mean field approximation. The fair way to treat this system is to say that if we pick up any pair of molecules and they are close enough to each other, they will interact. And to calculate all the forces acting in the system, or the total free energy of the system, we actually should go through all the pairs of the molecules and check their interaction. Actually, this is where you spend most of your time doing molecular dynamic or Monte Carlo simulation, because in this method you have to calculate forces and energies a lot. In mean wheel approach, we say that if you pick up a single molecule in the system and you want to calculate how it interacts with other molecules, you're not considering exactly individual interaction between molecules, but you say that this molecule interacts only with average distribution of other molecules. This simple idea allows us to make a numerical minimization of the system free energy and find the equilibrium state and all corresponding equilibrium properties of our system. Of course, there is a lot of issues how to do the minimization of the free energy in an efficient way and how to implement it in an efficient and flexible computer simulation code. And we don't have time now to talk about this in details, but when you have a computer code, you can go to a big computer, run it in parallel, and very fast get some really fancy results. For example, on this picture you can see the cluster we have in our laboratory consisting of 252 processors distributed on 27 nodes. And this cluster we use for simulation, which I show you on the next slides. As I told you in the beginning, we are going to simulate not only poor phospholipid membrane, but its interaction with nanoparticles. So to introduce 
nanoparticle in our model, we modify it a little bit. We add hard walls on the top and bottom of the simulation box to prevent the bilayer bending, and then we insert nanoparticle of specified shape and size in the simulation box and we calculate the free energy cost of such insertion. So the idea is that putting this nanoparticle in different positions in the box, we can calculate the free energy barrier for the translocation of this nanoparticle through the bilayer. And we can work with the different nanoparticles. At the moment we are working with cylindrical or spherical ones, these homogeneous or pattern surfaces. But due to lack of time, I am going just to show you a few examples of the cylindrical ones. Here you can see result of the simulation of hydrophilic nanotube insertion in a phospholipid bilayer. This gyrophilic nanotube is actually representing carbon nanotube covered with gyrophilic coating. You can see here that when we insert it in the membrane with a perpendicular orientation, we're making a hole in the membrane, and the gyrophobic core of the membrane is trying to avoid contact with the surface of the nanotube. And you see that the a free energy barrier here is higher than Hadel KT, which saying that uh, the nanotube won't be able to penetrate in the membrane by thermal motion because this energy is too high. And we're doing it here in perpendicular orientation because uh, in this orientation we disturb the smallest possible area of the bilayer. It means that if you try to insert the nanotube in other orientation, the size of pore you should create in the membrane will be larger and then the free energy barrier will be even higher. In case of gyrophobic nanotube, the situation is opposite. You can see here that the gyrophobic core of the membrane is really likely to contact with the surface of the nanotube, and when we insert the nanotube inside the membrane, the energy goes down. But then you stuck, because in order to translocate through the membrane, you should pull out the nanotube from other side of the membrane, and then you should cross the energy barrier from minimum to maximum, and it is too high, and you can't cross it. And actually, if you provide freedom to the nanotube to change its orientation, it will prefer to flip in this case and be parallel to the bilayer. So we repeated this simulation with the different uh, hydrophobicity of the nanotube surface and as well with different diameters of nanotube. And our general conclusion was that a nanotube is homogeneous surface is not able to translocate through the phospholipid bilayer uh, because it either stuck inside, either cannot penetrate into it. And then we ask a question, what happens if a nanotube has pattern surface? Probably because some biological molecules adsorb spontaneously on this surface and create some patterns on it. Here you can see our general ideas which type of patterning can enhance the translocation of the nanotube through the phospholipid bilayer. First of all, it should consist of uh, two types of surface with uh, opposite energy contribution compensating each other. It should be a periodical with a periodicity about one quarter of the bilayer thickness, because in this case when you're already in the membrane and you move a little bit, uh, you don't change significantly the energy. And also the tip of nanotube should be special in order to minimize the energy change at smaller insertion of the nanotube. And here you can see result of simulation of translocation of pattern nanotube through the phospholipid membrane. You can see that the uh, free energy curve of the pattern nanotube, the green line, is much closer to zero than free energy curves corresponding to homogeneously red and homogeneously violet nanotubes. And the free energy barrier of translocation in, is for pattern nanotube is at least twice lower than for homogeneous ones. And actually, if you start to modify the interaction for, uh, properties of different type of surface in this pattern, we actually can enhance this barrier even more. So here my time comes to end and I come to a brief summary. What we are doing? We are developing fast mean field method for simulation of nanoparticles interaction with phospholipid membranes. And as results I shown you here show, we believe that nanotube with homogeneous surface properties are not able to translocate through the phospholipid membranes by thermal diffusion, but smart and patterning of the nanotube can significantly enhance such translocation. If you like to know more details about it, you should have a look at our articles shown here. Thank you for your attention.